Hello, how's it going? Today we're on a show called Odds and Ends. I just thought of it on the fly and I thought I might as well record it and see how it goes. Now if you don't know the concept of Odds and Ends, which you wouldn't because I, you know, I just made it up. Basically it's anything in my collection of collectibles, not just necessarily games, but mostly gaming related things, you'll see. And obviously I'm going to exclude some things, you know, because if I took everything from my collection of various things it would take forever. So it's not a comprehensive list, but you know, I'm just going to go over stuff that I think is worth showing that maybe I haven't before, like check back there are some books and some games and stuff. I'm not, you know, gonna show that or any of the DVDs like that. I'm just gonna show, like the name of the title says, Odds and Ends. So, without further ado, let's a freaking a go. Believe it or not, I'm going to show a grip for my Nintendo Switch, a beat-em-ups grip. Now, beat-em-ups is a channel on YouTube, which I'm kind of fond of. You know, I think a lot, a lot of the stuff he does is pretty cool. I think some of it, the stuff he does is kind of lame. You know, he's a mid-YouTuber, but I really like the look of the uh, grip, as you can see. And uh, I really like Satisfy Grips. And if you look, I can just, uh, I can do it like so, and then it works. And by the way, if you're curious, my Joy-Cons actually have third-party, um, or aftermarket, I should say, shells, I should say. Uh, yeah, they're pretty freaking cool and they're nice and matte and I really like them and uh, This one actually knows this one doesn't have rumble, but that's okay. It's whatever, you know I pretty much treat it like a switch light anyway, but anyway when it comes to the grip It's nice and sturdy, you know, I can move it up and down pretty well, you know, shit doesn't move necessarily So next up is a ba-bomb. Yes, it's uh, it's a plush It's a plush of a ba-bomb that I got at a, at a uh, deep discount store not the actual name deep discount just like a store that has very deep discounts uh kind of a, like a spin-off i guess or a or an imitation i should say uh, in my local city or town which i'm not going to dox myself basically uh yeah i bought this bomb it's probably from a japanese crane game overstock it's uh it's really high quality i was surprised by how high quality it was considering this store also had a lot of chinese ripoffs and whatnot but this is not one of them this is legit this is actually sold in japan as an official mario product not much else to say about that uh let's go towards some actual games yes some games yeah i'm actually gonna include games as part of a kind of an addendum to my switch video it's uh teenage mutant ninja turtles shredder's revenge no i said the longest thing yeah it's it's uh it's a freaking beat-em-up Speaking of beat em ups, I know I just showed the grip, but it's a freaking beat em up made by some of the same people by Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, but not really because, you know, there's a whole story, but basically the game was originally created in one studio in, in uh, the West, but then that studio uh, gave up on it, and then a studio in uh, China or Taiwan, I don't remember exactly where I'll put it up on the screen, they single handedly uh, worked on the game, the rest of the game, for like less than a year. It's insane how long it took, like how short it took, I should say. And uh, so it's probably not the same devs, but it does feel a lot similar to Scott Pilgrim and also by extension River City Ransom because Scott Pilgrim is basically just River City Ransom but with a different skin. But this is great. This is a great evolution of the formula. I like the fact that you can play six players at once. That's pretty freaking cool if I do say so myself. Uh, and guess what? It didn't just come with a game. It came with a soundtrack, a CD, a full-fledged CD. And uh... It's made to look in the style of an old PC game. If I take this out, let me take this out real quick. It freaking has a little pizza on it. And, uh, and on the back, it has a track listing. It is in English, the track listing, and it is compatible with any CD player because CDs are not region locked, unlike DVDs and Blu-rays. That's pretty freaking cool. And by the way, not, not all Blu-rays are region locked because obviously you can play PS4 games and PS3 games and Xbox you know, One and Xbox Series S and X games in multiple regions, and those are made from blu-ray so there you go so um next up is another collectible another collectible from teenage mutant ninja turtle shredders revenge it's an acrylic stand look at this baby right here it's a nice little acrylic stand that i put together myself so uh be proud of me because i know i'm a boss yes indeed uh yeah it's a nice little acrylic stand the bottom says teenage mutant ninja turtles shredders revenge which i've been having a lot of trouble saying which is funny but yeah it's a nice stand with all the boys Boys, all the turtle boys. I wish it had all the playable characters, but it doesn't because it's small. I have a uh, acrylic uh, Star Fox 64 uh, little uh, cover, and I also have an acrylic um, Mario uh, Mario Kart 64 uh, acrylic little thing that I got from uh, my Nintendo store for uh, redeeming some uh, silver. 
or platinum or whatever it's called. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty freaking rad. And going in no particular order, let's move on to a controller that I got for a uh, Nintendo. Nintendo Switch. So far, everything's been Nintendo Switch related. Yes, it's a uh, freaking Nintendo Switch GameCube style controller by Power A, and it's wireless, and it's pretty freaking cool. It's got a little bit of drift, which I'm not exactly happy about, but it's no big deal. Ultimately, you know, what can you do about it? Um, I, I got it from a listing that said it was wired, but I knew it wasn't, and I was really pumped when it came in and it wasn't wired. It was wireless. So I got a steal on it, because these are actually kind of hard to find. Uh, and uh, But the only bad thing was the battery terminal was a bit kind of leaky due to the fact that they, uh, I guess they had bad batteries and they just took them out before they shipped them. But I fixed it with some isopropyl alcohol, because I'm a good, you know, controller owner. Let's, uh, let's switch it up. <laughs> I get it, it's Nintendo Switch, but this is not Nintendo Switch. This is a Steam controller. Yes, I actually do own a Steam controller, and I freaking love it. I love the Steam controller. It's one of my favorite controllers I own. I use it all the freaking time. It's, it's even great to use as a keyboard and mouse when you're, you know, when I'm on my bed, just uh, watching stuff. It's criminally underrated. I think it deserves a lot more praise than it really got over uh, the years. And I think it's a pioneer because then it eventually led to the great controls of the Steam Deck. And finally in Controller Town, actually I shouldn't say finally because there's two more. It's uh, a PlayStation 4 controller with customizable buttons, or I should say uh, analog sticks. You can plop them out and put other ones in. I'm not going to show all of them. But right now with my setup, I have a little bitty thing where I can, you know, uh, I control FPS games a certain way. Pretty freaking rad. And I installed it myself and I didn't break anything. I'm pretty freaking proud of myself. Uh, to wrap up the controller thing, let's show the two uh, Xbox controllers that I own. Xbox uh, Series X and Xbox One, respectively. Uh, but I reversed them because this is the Xbox One controller. It's a Wolverine, a Razer Wolverine. And I got it used. Um, it doesn't have all the ex uh, all the extensions and uh, it's a bit worn. I I'm not very fond of that. But it's freaking rad and if you listen to this the buttons click they don't even necessarily push down in a, tr in a traditional way and um everything feels really nice on it and i don't use it enough in my opinion um it's freaking uh power a uh enhanced controller whatever the hell um yeah basically it has a little rgb feature and the other one control other controller has an rgb feature as well but this one's not exactly a full rgb because you have to uh set it to custom profiles they only show one color at a time but it's a freaking nice xbox controller and i got it for my birthday one time i don't remember which birthday it was a while ago what's up guys i couldn't control myself for the second video not in a row but in a decent little bit yeah for, uh, for sure um basically i have an impulse problem but i guess you're not surprised considering i do own 70 well now 71 uh switch games and you want to know what the 71st game is well i'll tell you it's freaking uh oops it's backwards let me try it again it's a uh, freaking uh hypno space outlaw by fan gamer uh and by the way fan gamer basically just gets uh limited run sloppy seconds which uh is whatever i mean i, I don't really give a shit I mean, I got it on clearance from Best Buy and I paid 17 11 That's how much I paid for this freaking game. Freaking sweet. I had to drive super far, like uh, way too far to justify the purchase, but yeah, my birthday's tomorrow. I'm gonna treat myself. Who cares? Anyway, uh, if you're curious, I'm turning 25. The less said about that, the better. Freaking open it up, baby. Let's go. You tell us in the background, it's Uniracers. It's a good game and I wish it got re-released, but the problem is stupid uh freaking pixar i don't think they own the concept of a unicycle but uh i guess they do for some stupid reason yeah and you're wondering how i'm playing this completely legally god this thing is like fort knox unsealed and what's inside uh shit let me check real quick oh it's an audio tour what the hell is this what the hell is this What's this little thing? I was expecting a manual. I was not expecting a little mini CD. Holy crap! And it's a little ad too. Let me let me see this shit real quick. It's a little ad. It's from uh, from Hypnospace. Wow, we. And uh, it came with the little little mini CD. Oh my god, that's so adorable. Oh my god, that's so cute. Holy crap! That's my genuine reaction. I had no idea that was in here. Look at it. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty right here. It's beautiful. It's freaking beautiful, man. Look at that. Look at that right there. I'm turning British for some reason. It makes me very happy. They have like, uh, they have like interviews and everything and they have like songs and oh my god, that's so cool. So yeah, if you're curious uh, what the inside looks like, 
It's right here. Uh, and they're also uh, they're also uh, advertising the soundtrack, which I probably won't buy, but that's okay uh, because I'm not much into vinyl because I think vinyl's too expensive. I think CD works better anyway. But that's freaking unbelievably cool, and I only got that for like seventeen eleven. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, that's that for this segment. Let's get back to past Matt and see what he's up to. He's probably gonna talk about some stupid shit. Who knows? And uh. Peace. So yes, uh, that was a bit of a lightning round, and it's gonna keep going faster and faster, baby. Let's freaking a go. It's a Toho. What is this called? Toho Spell Bubble? Something like that. It's a puzzle bubble game slash rhythm game slash Toho game where you where you listen to great Toho songs. This is a uh, this is a Taiwanese slash Hong Kong slash whatever copy. Um, it's an Asian copy, I should say. Um, yeah, it's actually one of my uh, one of my I think it's my second Asian copy ever. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, um, there's a lot of DLC for it. Probably not gonna buy any of the DLC because. I'm pretty happy with, with the game as it stands. I'm pretty good at the game, which I'm very happy about. And in general, it's a really, really fun and addictive game. I think it's very much good. It's, I didn't realize it was officially Taito licensed, so the Puzzle Bobble, uh, like, you know, idea and branding is, like, all over it, which I think is insane. Which, by the way, that's a whole other kind of divergent subject, but... The whole sort of puzzle bobble bust to move debacle is kind of crazy. Do some research on that. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, yeah, and moving on to the last Switch game before we switch into a whole different kind of pop culture thing. It's uh, Clockwork Aquario. Yes, Clockwork Aquario. It's a uh, it's a strictly limited game, which I didn't buy through strictly limited. I, buy it through, I, I bought it through Enin, through Play Asia. So I hope I didn't get any money. Maybe I did. But uh, yeah, it's a freaking arcade game reconstructed from... Uh, uh, source code that was previously lost or uh, unobtainable due to you know licensing they bought it from sega they completed it they sold it it's a pretty bare bones package it's not exactly the most uh you know premium package so that's certainly true but it's a freaking rad game oh and by the way uh none of these games have manuals no manual squad hype today i'm sorry to say so next up in the realm of pop culture is pins yes i actually collect pins and the first pin i ever got was a uh, pin of a character from borderlands I don't know her name. I wish I did. Uh, it doesn't even say, so I can't even tell you. Uh, I never played Borderlands 3. just thought it looked cool, and it was on clearance. So, moving on is a custom pin I ordered from Etsy of a character from Fleabag, the titular Fleabag. Uh, if anybody's seen the show, you know the reference. It's, uh, it's a freaking nosebleed Fleabag. It's a great pin. I don't know what else to say. Next up is a pin, I believe, from Loot Crate. Back when they were still around, they're not around anymore. Haha. <laughs> I don't know why I said haha. -ha. I mean, people lost their jobs. But it's a freaking Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah, it's freaking red. It's a different style pin from the two other pins I showed. It's more of like a sort of like hard line sort of metal aesthetic. Like actual metal, not like metal. Next up is a bootleg pin of Kirby that I got from a local game shop. Uh, it's uh, Kirby with his little sword, like his little Zelda sword or i guess uh lank sword yeah um it's hard to see because uh focus is not exactly the best but it's really small next up is a furry pin which i didn't get because i'm not a furry well maybe i am but that's for you to figure out uh yeah it's uh it's not a furry so don't be alarmed just a snake. I really like snakes. And so I thought, I'm going to buy a snake. A little harden on it. It was the only non-furry thing they had. And I'm like, this is freaking rad. And it's cheap. This furries are stingy, I guess. Anyway, there's that. And it's got a, it's got a two pin things on the back. Which I use custom pin things that I got from a nice store on eBay. Um, I might even give you a link. They're really nice. Check them out. Uh, yeah. And this is this one has three. There's a, a Galaga ship. Pew, 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 pew. It's a Galaga ship. Frick, I can't hold it up straight. It's a Galaga ship. Yep, it's the ship from Galaga. It's really nice. I really like it. It's uh, it's a nice old school pin. Next up is another bootleg pin. It's from Mortal Kombat. It's the Mortal Kombat logo. It's got a little nice sheen to it. I really like it. Finally, last but certainly not least, on the pin section is uh. A freaking Tiki guy from Oni Plays, their store, or I guess Oni and his friends. It's It was for a summer thing, it was on clearance. I got it because I like it, so there you go. Let's briefly jump back into the world of gaming, because I want, want to show the bootleg amiibos that I mentioned in my Switch video, because I thought that'd be interesting to show. Yes, I do own bootleg amiibos. If you want to know what I mean, there, here's one right here. It's Jay. It's not legit. It's got a little sticker on the back. Then I have, uh... 
Uh, my favorite bird, which they added in, uh, in DLC, which I was super pumped about. Uh, Ace, He's he was basically uh, the one I wanted and not Jay. So Jay's basically useless now. And finally we have Kid, which I, he's still in my village, hopefully. I mean, I haven't played in a while. He probably moved. There's the uh, Breath of the Wild amiibos in this nice little container. They have all manner of bootleg uh, Legend of Zelda uh, amiibos that I used to complete the game to a certain extent. I didn't get all the Koroks. I used these to get the bonus costumes and whatnot. Next up is uh, more amiibos. We have uh, Anka and a little crappy little amiibo thing. We have uh, freaking uh, Cherry, best girl. Well, Anka's best girl. It's kind of hard to decide. There, then we have the uh, Hello Kitty people like Toby, Marty, which he, he is in my village, I believe, or he should be. Some he didn't move. We have Cube. He's non uh, freaking Hello Kitty. I like him quite a bit. We have Rhea. I'm assuming her name is, her name is Rilla. Probably Rilla because she's a gorilla. We have Chai. Let me show Chai real quick. She looks like this. Chelsea. Right here. And uh, finally, we have Elliot. Now, here's my thing why can't they include the uh, Smash uh, characters? Like uh, the Ganon character, the pig, or like Medley from the uh, the uh, Link, uh, the Wind Waker amiibos, or why can't they do uh, freaking uh, who's the other one? Oh yeah, there's like one based off the Wolf amiibo from Twilight Princess. Like why can't they do those characters? Like th those were the only characters I feel like should should have been included in the base game that weren't there and like haven't been added since. Like that's really freaking annoying. I swear to God. Uh, I always forget his name. I think his name's Kiro Itori. Kiro Itori, uh, I don't remember exactly his name. He's the little guy from Ryakuma. I got him in a nice little plush form for super cheap. I'm really happy with him. Uh, he, he's probably shown up a, quite a bit in the background of some of my in-person sort of camera videos that you've seen. And he's very lovely. Mm, I love him. Here's the Mefferts egg. At one point, this was super rare. It is not rare anymore. And I'm really disappointed in it, but this is an original run. It's only missing one little piece on uh, in, the, in the little uh, caps on the end. And uh, if you want to how it sounds. It's pretty nice. Next up is a cube I can actually solve. It's the Ready Cube. This one is officially licensed, I believe. Uh, it's a it's an original. Um, Hong Kong original, I guess. It catches quite a bit, but that's no big deal, honestly. I do enjoy it quite a lot, and uh, I'm happy with it. It's really dirty, and it's also, like, very slow. It's a freaking Dino Cube. It's a Smaz Dino Cube, which I don't know how common these are anymore. But these, these are also super easy to solve. I can solve the Ready Cube and this as well. They're super easy to solve. And uh, I've actually solved the 2x2 two two ones, believe it or not, which I will show next. I won't show me actually solving it, because I did it by pure accident. And uh, when it comes to actually doing it on purpose I can get it to like where the two uh, little corner pieces on the front are flipped and that's it. Next up is a V cube 2x2. Two two. Yeah why'd I go with a V cube? I don't know dude it's pretty weird to me to go with a V cube isn't it? I mean considering there's way better 2x2s. Two this one has painted on shit which I'm not exactly fond of but eh, it's whatever dude it's freaking whatever. Hey look at that I, fi I finished it. Just kidding no I didn't. Next up is a freaking uh uh what's it called uh it's called a skewb. It's called a skewb. And it has a gimmick of when you turn it, the uh, some of the metal parts change. And it's kind of gummy right now, but it's a pretty nice uh, cube. So we're done with the Rubik's Cubes, or I guess twisty puzzles for those non-normies, uh, non like myself. We have two last games that I completely forgot about during recording that I got in between uh, the last video I shot, which was the uh, games I need in my collection sort of thing, which kind of proud of, kind of not, you know. It, it's whatever, I was, I was really depressed back then. Seriously, I was. I'm doing a lot better now, so yeah. It's freaking Ghost Blade HD. Yeah, it's Ghost Blade HD by East Asia Saw. It's a shoot 'em up. It's actually like fifteen dollars when uh, when not on sale, which is kind of stupid, but it's whatever. What you going to do? But yeah, it's pretty nice, pretty nice, and I really do enjoy it. It's actually not that bad of a game, and uh, it's it's like actually a quality shoot 'em up in my opinion. Although I wish it had an option for a limited continue so I could actually beat the game, but I guess I just gotta get good scrub. And finally, in this uh, brief uh, little
little freaking excursion or brief for me I guess based on my recent uh, video uploading schedule when it's not shit post is uh diamond and pearl or uh, I guess I should say brilliant diamond Pokemon uh brilliant diamond which I know in my uh my switch collection video I did mention how the, all the other Pokemon games are trash I was wrong I admit my fault I am wrong this game is not that bad it's not worth the money that, that they're charging for it I paid like 20 something dollars I'm pretty happy about that uh, I don't pay any more because it's not worth that much and uh Pokemon Legends Arceus is actually pretty good I think it's actually worth the money I was completely wrong about that I know I'm, I'm, I'm just as shocked as you are looks like doo-doo but it's good it's actually not it doesn't look like that much like doo-doo it just looks like a really bad GameCube game which isn't that bad but yeah um speaking of this game it's pretty freaking nice um it's not the best pokemon game i'm waiting for the black and white remakes those are gonna be freaking amazing like i would say probably the best remake so far is still fire red and leaf green in my humble opinion i've not played heart gold and soul silver maybe they're better i mean it's better than the alpha and mega alpha and ruby and mega sapphire i thought those ones were black i don't like those ones yeah um this is nice it's not nostalgic because i never played it i like the underground mechanic as do most people and uh it plays in english which i'm really happy about it was super cheap because it was japanese Came in a decent amount of time the seller was super nice I really like him uh, and uh, yeah not much more I can say about it so without further ado let's uh, cue the freaking uh, music this just in baby I got a game from Japan it's a uh, Ravagey swag let's unbox it or let's say unseal it right freaking now yeah I literally just got this from the mail I just signed and everything so let's freaking unseal it I'm getting it I'm getting it I'm getting it it's unsheathed what's inside it's this Wowie, that's weird. I have actually played the Wii game. Wii game is pretty freaking rad. Uh, and the arcade game. I've not played this. Is, is, is it Radergy Swag as well as the Nomadic Swamp or whatever? Yeah, there's like some limited release for this that's sort of a, uh, you know, kind of a scam because they've had on pre-order for the longest time and they're still not shipping it out with TBD, you know, attached to it. So I got the non-scam version, the one that actually comes. I got from a seller from Japan. He's very nice. I'm going to give him a positive rating once we're done with this. Bada bing. Uh, bada boom. Skis. Now cue the music. Don't mind the background. I forgot one last thing. That last thing is... Wait for it. Manual squad hype. I rest my case.